New York, September 2004. The race for the White House was reaching a dramatic climax. The candidates were neck and neck in the polls. Both were now desperate to seize any advantage over the other. President Bush was heading for his party's convention at Madison Square Garden. This was effectively his last opportunity to get ahead. His advisors knew that everything depended on how he was presented. They needed an iconic image to convince the American electorate that he was their man. And that would mean exploiting the power of art. Well, although they didn't know it, the techniques that they turned to weren't of the modern day. The methods they would use had been invented thousands of years ago. Because the political power of art was discovered by kings and emperors in the ancient world. It was these leaders who first used imagery to manipulate their subjects. And today, our modern politicians are exploiting those same visual strategies. This is the story of how those ancient leaders created techniques of visual persuasion so powerful they've still got a hold on us today. Inside Madison Square Garden, the delegates eagerly awaited the high point of the convention, the president's speech. His advisers knew they needed something memorable and dramatic. They decided to exploit the most potent political images of his presidency, his presence at Ground Zero. Among the ruins of the World Trade Center, He'd looked strong and commanding, and yet he still appeared caring and warm. These were the pictures that defined his presidency. If his advisors could only tap into the power of these iconic images, they'd give their man a huge advantage. With just 12 hours to go, they ordered the original stage to be ripped out and a brand new one built in its place. What they came up with was a modern masterpiece. The president's team drew on a set of visual techniques that leaders had been using for thousands of years. He walked to the stage alone, a commanding leader, confident and in control. The set was simple, but dominated by the symbols of his power. He was raised slightly above the crowd, but still stood amongst them. and they ensured that the cameras captured the conviction on his face. The effect was electrifying. Here was a man who was strong but caring, a powerful leader close to his people, the compassionate head of a family at war. Thank you all. 
his advisors had succeeded. The scene recreated those iconic images so familiar to every American. I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the strategy worked. George Bush shot ahead in the polls, and he stayed ahead until the election was won. But why did it work? How do politicians use images to persuade us, often without us even knowing it? The only way of understanding this is to uncover how these powerful visual techniques were invented by leaders thousands of years ago. There was a time when our ancestors lived in small communities. Leaders were the heads of families or clans. Everyone knew them. They had little need of any artistic devices to communicate their power. So what happened? How did imagery come to be used as a political tool? Well, it's a process that happens at different times in various parts of the world. But in one of those parts, Britain, archaeologists believe that they've recently hit upon the time and the place. It's new light on one of the country's oldest and best known monuments, Stonehenge. This is the biggest prehistoric monument in Europe. Something extraordinary must have happened here for a structure of this size to be built by people living in small, isolated communities. This was one of the great mysteries of the ancient world. Now, through our understanding of the persuasive power of art, we may have found an answer. It all began with the chance discovery of a burial site near Stonehenge. 